Hey guys, this is Zach with Next Tech News, and today we're going to be upgrading my entire home as well as studio's whole networking situation. Situation. Today we're going to be upgrading the entire networking situation here, upgrading both the studio's Wi-Fi as well as the entirety of the house's Wi-Fi. And I have some unique ways I'm doing it all, so I'll definitely share that with you guys. So starting from left to right, we have the TP-Link 2 port gigabyte power line kit. Then we have the Eero mesh network, which includes the three Eros. Then I have a 16 port Netgear switch and another TP-Link power line kit. The old router was a Netgear Nighthawk X6 and it worked pretty well, but it's on one end of the house and my bedroom is on the complete opposite end of the house. This is a really long house. And so I'd get pretty weak signals on the other side in my bedroom. So basically what I ended up deciding was a mesh network would work a lot better because of how long my house is. So the first step in installing the mesh network would be to uninstall your original router. So what I did next was something that isn't necessary, but I thought it was a nice step. The Eros don't have many ethernet ports on the back of them. They only have two ports on the back. So I decided to get a switch so that I have future networking abilities through this channel. Obviously this is all set up in my studio and eventually I might want a server or something like that and I'll need a network switch to control all of that. So I decided to go ahead and set up my networking switch now while everything was coming apart. So to install the networking switch, what I did was put in the two included screws in the packaging and marked the holes on the underside of the cabinet. Then I took the drill and went ahead and drilled those screws into it and then you just kind of slide the networking switch onto the screws and it pops on. It has like a little lock thing like a picture frame would and it, that's what locks it into place. And then obviously I started plugging in all my different Ethernet devices. I wire my computer through Ethernet, my Xbox through Ethernet, and then eventually I'm going to have an HTPC that's also going to be using Ethernet. So I went ahead and added a couple extra Ethernet cables into the system. So the second step in installing an Eero is pretty simple. Basically you take that USB-C power cord, plug it into the wall, and then plug it into the back of the Eero. Then take the ethernet cord and plug one end into the back side of the Eero and then one end into your switch if you have one or the back side of your modem. So with the third step you move over to your phone and you immediately will go to the Google Play Store and search Eero and you'll see the Eero app. You'll need to go ahead and install this app and then follow the instructions on the screen. So you'll go next, next, next and then let's get started. And after that, you'll just need to register. All it really asks for is your name, your number, and your email. It just uses the number for verification purposes as well as the email. So no need to walk you through that, obviously. So after you register, you hit start and go next, 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 and next. And then it'll ask you for your location. Just say allow, and then your phone will start looking for the Eero. Once the Eero is detected, it will then ask you what location in your house it's in so that you can identify where it is later. Once you choose the location and then hit next, the app will then set up your Eero. And this takes a couple minutes. It can range from anywhere from five to maybe even up to 10 minutes. Mine took a little while, but I've seen other people's take a lot less time. So that can definitely vary. But then once it's done setting up, it will then ask you to create your own network. So you're choosing the name of your network and all that. Of course, look at my amazing creative skills here with this pretty perfect name, don't you think? Then once you enter your network name and the password for it, it will begin registering your Eero. Once the Eero is done registering, it is completely set up and your Wi-Fi is good to go. Step four in setting up your Eero network would be to install the next base station. Obviously you just again plug in with the USB-C power connector and then I was actually originally going to be using the TP-Link uh, power adapter so that everything was kind of like hardwired into the ethernet switch but it ended up not working in my house. Powerline adapters 
can vary and depending on how old or new your house is and the way the circuits are set up, sometimes they just don't work. So sadly in my system, I ended up going for the wireless setup, but actually the wireless setup ended up working very well and through testing and everything, I really got a extremely strong signal all the way throughout the house with the wireless setup and honestly it was still extremely fast so there's no reason to fret if you're stuck with the wireless solution because you don't have a way of hooking each base station into ethernet it's really not that big of a deal. Step 5 would be to go to the app again go to the menu and click add Eero and then you choose whether you have a base station or if you have the beacon. Then click next. Then the app will begin looking for your Eero base station or beacon. Once it finds the Eero base station or beacon, it will then start testing its placement to make sure it's placed in a good location in your house. And then once the testing's done, it'll begin setting up that Eero base station or if you have the beacon, of course. And once the setup is done, you are completely set up and you now have a home base station set up and now the satellite base station set up as well. And this is obviously the same setup process you'll do for every single base station or beacon you add to your Eero setup. I hope you guys liked this video of me upgrading my networking setup to a mesh network and showing you exactly how that's done. If you guys ever feel like you need to support the channel or you feel like you want to, you can always check out my Patreon link down below or my Amazon affiliates links in the description below as well. Again, I hope you guys liked this video. This is Zach with Next Tech News. See ya!